Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you're God and God alone, and there is none beside you. You're God all by yourself. You're so transcendent, high and lifted up and exalted and yet immanent with us, identifying with our struggles and our humanness, earthly. Fathers, we give reflection to your word. Pray that your Holy Spirit will speak and characterize every aspect of this message. Bless our hearts as we both speak and receive. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. I am cognizant of the time and the fact that we have been going for some while now. And I would say how much I can give more of an exhortation or should I say as the Lord leads. I was listening to our Dr. Frey giving the introduction of myself. And I looked over to Pastor Boyne and I said, who is she talking? It must be you, mighty man of God. Who is that? Because I feel so earthly, so much more as a servant. I feel as if I am a servant more grabbling than to be a mighty man. Amen? And I can tell you that any time I start to feel like I'm a mighty man of God, then I know something <laughs> gone wrong with me. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen? But I want to see, I won't, be, I won't give, um, try to address the entire theme as is printed on the, in, on the program. Rooted and grounded in fasting and prayer for the journey. I will just simply focus on the power of prayer. The power of prayer. And those of you who have and would have heard me speak or preach on the subject of prayer would know that I hardly speak about prayer without giving credence to a writer by the name of E.M. Bounds. A writer I consider to be one of the greatest authorities on the subject of prayer. In one of his books, he stated that prayer is the force that shapes the world. He claims that prayer is a capital stock in heaven by which God is motivated to carry on his work on earth. Mr. Bounds further states that the earth is changed, revolutionized, Angels moved and rapid wings. God's policies are shaped when prayers become more numerous and efficient. He went on to say that the mightiest and greatest successes that come to God's cause are created by prayer. It is his conviction that when God's people come into their mightiest inheritance of the mightiest faith and undergirded by prayer, then angelic days of powerful activities occur. Based on our text, the power of prayer and its divine imperative is grounded and expressed 
in what I consider to be three words. Three words as used in this text by God as he spoke through the psalmist. Ask of me, as we see in verse 8 of Psalm chapter 2, which I will also use. He says in verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He says, ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And verse 9 of the same Psalm, chapter 2, says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So the divine imperative is grounded in the three words, ask. Amen. Ask of me. And I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Asking seem to be the key to unlock the power of God. Because the heathen for thine inheritance, I think, alludes to the fact that the heathens, I will speak some more about them, but they are the most ungodly, the most rebellious, the most difficult of people, the most diabolical of persons, the most satanic of persons. But the Lord says, if you ask of me, I shall bring them into subjection to you. The uttermost part of the earth speaks to the expanse and the degree to which God will go to res in response to those who ask. Shall we praise the Lord? In Matthew 7 and verse 7 to 8, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. As if to say that if you have never asked, you would never be given. Amen. But he says, ask and you shall be given. And it shall be given unto you. He says, seek and you shall find. He says, knock on the doors shall be open unto you. And verse 8 says, for everyone who asketh, receiveth. He didn't say, some people receive and some ask and don't receive. So the question is, why don't some people receive when they ask? It could be on the basis or it could be how you ask. For he says that everyone, 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 let me hear say everyone, Frey, Bowen, shall we praise the Lord, Dr. Ashley, everyone, who ask, receiveth. And he who seek, find. And to those who knock, the doors shall be open unto them. As if, if you have never asked, if you have never seek or sought to find him, if you never knock, the door will never be open. Oh, shall we praise the Lord in the house? James 4 and verse 2 says, You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. I want to read that again. It says you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Amen. And then he goes on in James 1 and verse 5 to 7. James says, if anyone of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all persons liberally. In other words, he gives without restraint. He gives without holding back. Everyone, who, if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all persons. There you go again. 
all persons liberally and upbraid it not without restraint not amen and it shall be given he says in verse 6 but let such a one ask in faith this then maybe brings to my understanding the reason why some people don't receive because they don't ask in faith they ask doubting and the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that anyone who comes to god first must believe that god is shall he praise the lord that god is you cannot come to god and you think that there is an invisible or there are some unknown being or some beings that are not there you are just asking as a pie in the sky he says brothers and sisters everyone who cometh to god must believe that god is and that god is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him shall we praise the lord so he says if anyone of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that give it to all persons liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given and verse 6 he says but let such a one ask in faith nothing wavering for any one of you ask wavering it is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tasked for let not that person think that he or she shall receive anything of the lord and so, brothers and sisters, the Lord outlined the way we are to ask. We are to ask in faith. Shall we praise the Lord? And I think it, in, it is in Hebrews 11 verse 1, he says, Faith is a substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. So though we don't see it when we ask, we believe that we have it. And if we believe that we have it, we shall receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we praise the Lord? According to our text, there is nothing that is too big that the Lord will not give to those who ask according to his will. Verse 8 says, He will give the heathen for your inheritance. Shall we praise the Lord? Oh, and some of us, we have some heathens in Jamaica, you know. We have some heathens in the world. And we have some heathens like Putin. Yes, brothers and sisters. And I call them heathen because they have no sense of God, no sense of love, no religion, no, relig no, no form of, 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 they have no sense of, of, the, of, of the regard for the sanctity of human life and the sacredness of human life. Amen. So I call him a heathen. Amen. So the Bible says, if we ask, God shall arrest him. And God shall arrest all the Edens and all those who oppose God and the things of God. Shall we praise the Lord? He will not only give us the heathen for our inheritance. He will give us the uttermost part of the earth for our possession. Amen. I think he said to, to, to Abraham, every place that your feet can i think it was joshua every place that your feet shall tread upon you shall receive it shall you praise the lord so if you ask and trust and believe and hope shall you praise the lord the lord shall give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession yeah, shall you praise the lord speaking to the scope as i said the expanse and the degree to which God will go to ensure that when his children ask, they receive. The heathens have been long classified as those who are not worshippers of God, but are false worshippers. They are false worshippers, are worshippers of false divinities. The word pagans from the Latin, paganos, has uh, brothers and sisters a similarity in terms of the connotation as related to the word heathen, viewed to be those of a particular community that do not worship the God of the Bible or the God of scriptures. And therefore they are addicted to idolatry 
worshiping things and money and materialism and sex and themselves they don't have any regard for the god of the bible but they worship material things they worship gods that have eyes but cannot see that have ears but cannot hear that have feet but cannot walk yes they are not worshipers of god they are addicted to idolatry and will oppose god they will oppose jesus christ they will oppose those who are followers of god and those who are anointed of god hey shall you praise the lord they oppose christ the frequent rendering in the hebrew of this terminology of these persons is rendered in the hebrew as goy g-o-y and then in the greek it is renders as ethnos amen and means a nation or people who will do things that are filthy and things that are abominable. I think it is to the heathens which the Bible alludes when it says in Second Kings verse 16 and verse 3, but you walk in the ways of the kings of Israel, yes, and made your sons to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathens who the Lord cast out from before the children of, of Israel. In, a, in other words, the heathen are classified as those persons who do abominable things, who do evil things, who do filthy things, who their ways are corrupt, who their ways are violent, their ways are murderous and wicked and devilish and devilish. But the Bible is telling us to ask God to render them null and void and inoperable in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall you praise the Lord? Shall you praise the Lord? They are ignorant of the truth and stand in opposition to the true God. They are hostile to the church and they are barbarous in their ways. They will try to trifle and to trample upon God's truth and upon God's people. But the Bible tells us to ask and the Lord shall render them null and void. And they, brothers and sisters, will try to defeat God's people and try to overcome God's people. But the Lord says that we should ask because these heathens, they are instruments of Satan. And the Bible tells us that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places and we see it in jamaica when managa put m16 in a tv to come at jamaica who them out to kill them not going to war they come to kill you and me our black brothers and sisters but in the name of jesus we ask god to render those who are instigators of evil and murderous thoughts and are instruments of the devil we ask god to bring them down whether they are in the church or they are in government or in opposition or they are just scammers and gangsters and damn men we ask god to bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ come on church come on church they are ignorant of God's truth they stand in opposition to God's truth to God they are hostile to the church and hostile to people they are barbarous they just think about themselves they will try to cripple god's church and they will brothers and sisters they will try to dampen everything that you say that is good they are just about money and themselves about houses and flashy cars they're about clocks and big boot and fancy pants and suit they are not about god but in the name of jesus let me say name of jesus and they know and they know that when they rise up against god amen the consequence 
are consequential, they shall invoke God's righteous indignation. God says, ask, and he will give them up. Shall he praise the Lord, and render them null and void. Amen. That's why the Bible says in verse 11, verse 9 of chapter 2, it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. We shall break them up in the name of Jesus. And the church needs to rise up and to declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are tearing those strongholds. When I was preparing this sermon, I said, God, I can't preach this sermon yeah. You need somebody else. Shall you praise the Lord? Because I am not worthy. Shall you praise the Lord? In verse 1 to 3, the text, in the text, the writer um, of the text, amen, and of this narrative ask, narrative ask, amen, why do the heathen rage in verse 1? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth set themselves up. When I saw Putin, I was bossy, and him just a sent thing to kill people. Why do the Eden rage? Why do they continue to bask in themselves? Why do the Eden rage? And the people imagine vain things. And verse 2 said, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. In other words, say let us divide people. Let us divide nations. Let us divide the church. Let us go against the righteous. Let us go against the anointed. Why do they continue to strive? The writer asks. And then the writer comes down and he says, Amen. Ask and the Lord will give them up. Shall we praise the Lord? Ask. Touch your neighbor and say, ask. And the Lord will give them up. Some of you don't pray for your pastors. You don't pray for your leaders. You don't pray for government. You don't pray for the rulers. And that's why they are so evil. Because the Bible tells us that righteousness will exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach. The uttermost part of the earth, the Lord say, he will give for our position. Why? To the heathen rage is always a question of incredulity. Amen. Or it is unbelievable. Amen. In other words, why do people um, rage in their wickedness in nations and attack other people, attack other pe nations, attack God's anointed? Amen. Why do they continue to strive in other ways? Why do the heathen rage? Is a question of incredulity. Yes, brothers and sisters, the church needs to pray against the evil forces that we see permeating the world, battling for the minds of our children, our young people, our men, our women, our boys, our girls, our marriages, our schools, our social institutions, our community. We need to pray in the name of Jesus and to go out in the name of Jesus and to say by force, we are taken by force. We need to take back our communities. We need to take back our schools. We need to take back government. We need to take over opposition. We need to take back the society in the name of Jesus. Don't let the devil take over our streets. Every strongholds, we must break them down. Oh, shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? We need to ask God and pray against the forces of corruption. Amen. Corrupt security forces, corrupt politicians, corrupt, amen, children, corrupt clergymen, corrupt congregations and churches, corrupt. Amen, women and men that work in the church. Amen, the church has the power to ask in the name of Jesus for whatsoever we ask, it shall be done, says John 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yes, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, we must ask 
that God will restore the land, restore family values, restore our churches, restore our people, restore and reshape, amen, the society. In the name of Jesus, restore love and peace in the world. Oh, shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? If God say, ask, ask. He said, ask and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance, the uttermost part of the earth. Shall we praise the Lord for your possession? Amen. We must ask. I'm going to tell you some things we must ask for. One, we must ask or pray, brothers and sisters, for the land. And I heard we're praying for the land. And when I say the land, this beautiful island of Jamaica, pray for other lands. Because sometimes what happens in other lands impact our land. So we must ask for God and to restore the lands and restore our people, our nation. We must pray so that we may suppress the powers of evil and exalt righteousness because sin is a reproach. Amen. But righteousness will exalt a nation. In 1 Timothy 2 and verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all. Verse 2, for kings and for all those who are in our authority that we, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. It would suggest that if we are not living a peaceable and quiet life in our land, it's because the church fails to pray. He says in verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our, our Savior. We need to ask for God to tear down strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds and to bring in subjection everything that vaunt it and exalt it itself against God. So we have the power to ask for God to tear down strongholds in the nation. And God knows we know that it is in Jamaica. Oh, shall we praise the Lord as we ask. Let us ask for God, amen, to clean the land of selfishness and of greed and of idolatry and of sexual impurity impropriety, failure to observe standards and honesty, modesty, consistent with proper behavior and character. Amen. Let us ask that God will cause bloodshed to cease. Amen. God will cause broken covenant to be restored to be restored in the church between ourselves and God broken covenant in relationships broken covenant with our children broken covenant to society that God will restore them in the name of Jesus let us ask come on church let us ask let us ask shall we praise the Lord let us pray until things shift in the atmosphere. Let us pray until devil take up in suitcase and leave. Let us pray until demons have, don't feel comfortable in you. Don't feel comfortable in your house. Don't feel comfortable in your community. Let us pray until Satan. Two weeks ago, I had a dream. And the dream was, I hear a voice saying to me, the devil says he's leaving. The devil says he's leaving. And I says, why is the devil leaving? And he says, because this place is not conducive for me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When we have praying church, when we have asking people, when we have praying society, when we have a praying nation, the devil will pack up him dulce mean a suitcase and he will leave. He will leave because him cast tear yasa. Shall we praise the Lord? Because this place will be occupied by angels of God. 
Shall he praise the Lord? Shall he praise the Lord? Let me hear you stand on your feet and say, Yes, Jesus. Yes, let him move. Let him move out of my land. Let him move out. Come on, church. I want to preach in this place. Come on, church. Woo! Come on, church. Let us pray until things shift in the atmosphere. Let us pray until things break. Let us pray until Satan lick down in little walk a lot and move. Woo! Shall we praise the Lord? Come on, let me hear you say shift. Shift. Make a shift in the atmosphere. Shall we praise the Lord? Let us pray until there is no more dark clouds over our community. No more dark clouds over our lives. Or over Oh God Almighty, help me preach. Somebody help me preach. Help me, help me, help me. Hallelujah. For we are tearing down strongholds. We are tearing down strongholds. Oh, we are tearing down strongholds in the name of the Lord. Oh, yes, things are getting better. Things are gonna change. Tearing down. We are pulling down. Oh, we are pulling down stronghold in the name of the Lord. Oh, things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are gonna change. We are tearing down stronghold in the name of the Lord. Come on. We are going to mash it down, mash it. We are going to mash it down. We are going to mash it down. In the name of the Lord. Oh, we are going to mash it down. We are going to mash it down. We are going to mash it down. Oh, we are tearing down stronghold. In the name of the Lord. Give me a minute. I just have two more points. You may be seated. Two more points to me. And then I'm finished. Shall we praise the Lord? You know me feel hairy. I feel something up here. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? We are going to mash it down. Hallelujah, shall we praise the Lord? Oh, things are getting better. So we need to reclaim the land in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, reclaim the land. When they set up fasting and prayer, go. When them have prayer meeting, go. And if they're not calling any, set up your own. Shall we praise the Lord? We claim the land. Secondly, brothers and sisters, we must ask God, amen, that his kingdom will come on earth and his will will be done on earth, that the righteousness of God will be established in the earth, amen, and that there will be a removal of the hidden agendas in the church and in state. Because there are a lot of people who come into the church, but they have hidden agendas. The Lord give me the wit sometimes when they come, me sneak them out and smell them. Hmm. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? When they come with them, had a, with them hidden agenda, I say, me no, me no, me start one. And you don't know, say, me no. Shall we praise the Lord? And that's why the church are mash up. Because when people come with them hidden agenda, you don't know. Sometimes I don't push them out, but I watch them closely. And I say, me no, me no. Say you have an hidden agenda. I say, me no, me no. But you're not going to get render. I 
I say, me no, me no. I say, you have an hidden gender. I say, me no, me no fight. Not going to get render. Oh, we are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of Jesus. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. I say, me no, me no. You come with hidden agenda. Come on. I say, me no, me no. It now go get render. Woo. Shall we praise the Lord? You know, me know. You come with your hidden agenda. Oh. We say, we know, we know. It now go get render. Woo. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Woo. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of the Lord. Come on, go a while. You know, I say, me never write this in my sermon. You know that this is a new song. Just a makeup right here so as we speak. So if you want to let, help me sing it and learn the song, help me sing it. Come on, stand on your feet. We dey go, we dey go, we dey go, we dey go, we say we know, we know. You come with hidden agenda. Come on. We, we know, we know. It now go get render. Woo! Yeah, I say we know, we know. You come with hidden agenda. Always, I say we know, we know it now go get render. Come on. We are gonna mash it down, mash it down in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, we are gonna mash it down, mash it down in the name of the Lord. Woo. We are gonna mash it down, mash it down in the name of Jesus. Woo. We are gonna mash it down, mash it down in the name of the Lord. Come on. Mount Zion, child, we know, we know, we're farmers. You come with an agenda. We go. I say, we know, we know, it now go get render. I say, we know, we know, you come with an hidden agenda. Boy. I say, we know, we know, it now go get render. Woo. We are going to mash it down, mash it down, in the name of Jesus. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of the Lord. Come on, come on. We are going to mash it, a 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 mash it. Come on, walla, 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 walla. Just get one little new pieces. Now you have to take your heel and do them. This is the dance for it. We are going to mash it, a mash it, a mash it in the name of Jesus. You can't do We are going to mash it, a mash it, a mash it in the name of the Lord. Come on. Come on, musician. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of Jesus. Woo! We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of the Lord. Come on. We don't sit down, people. Don't start mash. We mash it down, mash it down. In the name of Jesus. We are going to mash it down, mash it down. In the name of the Lord. One more time. Oh boy. I say we know, we know. You come with hidden agenda. Oy. I say we know, we know. Right now I'm going to get render. Woo. We say we know, we know. You come with hidden agenda. Woo. I say we know, we know. It now I'm going to get render. Woo. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. So we must ask for God's kingdom to come. And that his will be done. And that there will be a removal of the hidden agenda Come in the on. church and in the state. Let us pray for God to kill the spirit and the power of self-projection. Ask for God to kill the spirit, the material spirit and self. Let us ask God to kill the power struggle that is in the church. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? Nobody now say amen to that. Let us ask God to kill the spirit of greed and the spirit of oppression and the spirit of exploitation and extortionism. Matthew 6 and verse 10 says, When we pray, ask that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us ask for God to break satanic strongholds over regions, over nations, over churches, 
over communities, over families, and to open a door, a window into heaven for the free flow of the Spirit of God. Resulting in the massive spread of the gospel of peace. For Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Oh, wow. To the Greek, to the Jews, to the Gentiles, to the barbarian. Yes. To the Rasta man, to the white man, to the black man. Amen. And transforming lives. Amen. Neutralizing the forces of darkness. Thy kingdom come, O Lord. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all we need God's kingdom to come. John says, even so come now, Lord Jesus. Wow. Shall we praise the Lord? The last point I want to make. Let us ask that God will unveil Christ to a lost world. Unveil him. Remove the covering. Amen, because the gospel is hid from many people. For God to remove the scales from their eyes. Very tragic thing happened in Iron Shore this, just a few days ago. Young man I know, most of, some of you may have seen it on television. When I planted my first two coconut trees, he was one of those persons who helped me to plant it. He's a gardener, and he fell in a pit. 25 feet deep. Huh? Three trucks have to be used to remove the content of the pit before they could find his body. But the tragedy of the story is that he's someone who has never met the Lord as Savior. He works from Sunday to Sunday. Never met the Lord. Amen? And while we mourn for Shane, very loving person, good person, but never know Jesus. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? And I just continue to imagine what crossed his mind. What, 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 what went across his mind when he fell in that pit. And while he was going down, the agony, the struggle. What a way to die. What a way to die. And there are many other persons who feel that God is not part of their plan and their scheme and we should try and work as hard as we can we can't come to church me after work we can't serve god me after work we can't do this because i want to get as much as i can get out of society out of the land i want to i want to scam as much i want to do this as much brothers and sisters but let us pray that god will remove the scale from their eyes shall we praise the lord and veil Jesus to them so the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may shine true. Matthew 16 and 9 says, We have took the keys of the kingdom, and whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Stand on your feet with me. Stand on your feet. I need oh. every hour. Every hour I need, oh bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. I need Thee. I. Every hour, every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Father, we pray over this community of faith that you will give them a spirit to seek your face. And to allow them to understand that they have the power to take back their land, their community. They need not fear because you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, I pray that as we go back as a community 
of faith within our respective congregations will go transforming the ethos of where we are. In your name we pray. Amen.